Hi everyone, and welcome to our Finance 401 new business venture presentation. I'm Carson, and today I'm joined by Anthony, Cassidy, Jaden, and Mackenzie, and we're Apex Construction. Apex Construction is a general contracting company that provides services such as construction management, pre-construction engineering, consulting, across various industries such as commercial and public works. I'm going to do a little bit more of a focus on our operation plan and specifically on our bidding and tendering stage as it's so important to drum up new business that way. Um, traditionally, there's four ways to bid on a project. It'd be open tender bidding, joint venture bidding, competitive bidding, and single stage bidding. Just because we are a new general contracting company, we are going to focus a little bit more on open tender bidding and joint venture bidding. So open tender bidding is where various contractors will jump in on the bid and they'll present their quotes and forecasts to the project owner. And from that point, they'll decide which is the most attractive bid. Um, the pros to this is there's a, there's a lot of room for the contractor to get in there, even if they are a new company. It's just who ends up developing the best quotes and forecasts for the project, typically. Uh, cons to this is you usually have a hyper-competitive bidding market, as well as your gross margins can be a little bit squished when it comes to a competition trying to undercut your quotes. And then the next way of bidding would be joint venture tendering. Uh, this is where two contractors will go in on a project together at the same time. Uh, the big pros to this would be is you get to split the risk responsibility as well as you can pool in your resources such as like your finances, your subcontractor lists and access to new project owners. Um, more cons to this would be it requires a higher level across two companies which can be difficult as well as you have to figure out how to split the duties of the, respons the responsibilities of each company the best. And I'm going to jump it over to Mackenzie so he can talk a little bit more about our marketing and sales strategy. Our company will be focusing on three ways of marketing. Word of mouth, digital advertising, and trade conventions. Marketing is a key part of any new venture success and construction is no different. However, in the industry of construction, word of mouth can make or break a company. This is why our primary marketing focus isn't actually about marketing, but rather in providing the highest level of service on time and on budget. No amount of ad dollars will be able to hide poor service and low quality construction. Our digital advertising campaign will be targeted ads conveying the value of our company. This will be most important in developing a positive impression of our company when pursuing contracts, specifically any government contracts. Trade conventions and other industry-focused events will be critical for attracting new clients and demonstrating our firm's value. And while this has changed with COVID, we believe that utilizing digital channels to engage with prospective clients will allow us to help get our name out to as many clients as possible. Our sales strategy consists of three primary points, better than competitive pricing, repeat sales, and an easy to use web interface. Better than competitive pricing sounds slightly confusing, but what it comes down to is that we are willing to accept that early projects may run at a loss so that we are able to generate more sales and build ourselves a resume in the industry. We expect a significant amount of our sales to come from repeat clients or recommendations from those clients. So ensuring that we provide our clients the best value possible and staying in budget will ensure that we are able to secure future contracts. This concept ties into the first point in that we understand the construction market is the long game and that being a trusted name will carry significant value in the long run. If you go onto many construction companies' websites today, they are clunky and don't belong in this decade. We are designing a site that allows our customers to interact and understand more about who we are quite easily. Traditionally, websites have not been large drivers of sales, as the process mainly consists of bidding, meeting, etc. But COVID has accelerated the timelines of many aspects of business, making having digital resources and information be crucial when making decisions on contracts. So we believe we are well situated to take advantage of this trend. So how are we going to deliver these projects? Our delivery is going to change based on how our contract is set up. Our contract can either be set up as a lump sum or a construction management project. A lump sum project would be a fixed contract where we have control of our profit loss margins just because we get to have more control over who our sub trades and our material vendors are. On the other hand, a construction management project is a project where we're brought in during the design stage and because of that we don't get to have full control over our sub trades and our material vendors. This can actually be advantageous for us though, however, because we can speed up projects faster because we don't have to have such a structured uh, delivery schedule such as a lump sum project. This is a little bit more of a diagram on how the contracts are set up. With lump sum, you have your owners and then the owners deal with the designers. The designers then deal with the general contractors who then we can get to deal with the sub trades and the suppliers. 
Whereas construction management, we work hand in hand with the designers and then the subtrades and the material vendors are actually owned by the owner of the project. So a big concern with contracting is how you manage your finances. So when it comes to a contract structuring, we're going to definitely try and focus more on a construction management side of things just because we can front load the contracts and we can speed up the projects a little bit more. That way you essentially set up the contracts in a way that the owner is essentially financing their own project. This can run into a little bit more of a tax implication because you're taxed on your billables and not your recognizable revenue. But because we're expecting a little bit more of a loss in the first couple years, uh, we're not too concerned of that right now. The market that Apex plans on entering into is the construction services sector, and specifically the commercial and industrial construction sector. Commercial and industrial companies construct, add, alter, maintain, and repair buildings. The life cycle of the construction market is said to be mature, and this is due to the fact that there is predicted steady growth over the next decade, technology in the market is not constantly changing, and commercial and industrial construction market is an essential part of communities and the economy. Add-ons, improvements, upgrades and repairs, and maintenance on buildings and structures will always be required, necessary, and crucial to some extent. Factors affecting the market and key trends. Historically, the construction industry is sensitive to the upturns and downturns in the economy. When businesses and companies are profitable, they invest in commercial and industrial construction, upgrades, additions, and etc. The construction industry, specifically in Alberta, is also influenced by the weather. In the winter, when it is colder and snow is present, it tends to be slower and less busy for construction companies than in the summer, where companies are extremely busy. Some current key trends and predicted trends in the construction market over the next five years are the increasing demand for green and environmentally friendly building practices, both in operations and resources and materials. The hiring and use of subcontractors is increasing to help minimize and reduce labor and operational costs. The coronavirus pandemic is predicted to continue hindering the demand amongst consumers for commercial and industrial construction companies since businesses and companies are halting or delaying new buildings, additions, alterations, and any maintenance or repairs that are not necessary or needed immediately. This makes new companies entering into the market hesitant to do so since demand for services are predicted to be lower than normal in this particular market. A SWOT of the market. Some strengths of the commercial and industrial engineering market are the low import costs of materials and resources, the higher profits and revenues compared to other types of construction in the construction services sector, and the high employer revenue, which is projected to increase approximately 3% in the next 5 to 10 years. Some weaknesses of this market include that it is competitive and highly volatile, and that has a high initial capital requirement. Some factors that threaten the construction market include the strength of the economy and the weather, as mentioned before, as well as the changing of industry laws and regulations. Unforeseen and unpredictable industry standards and regulations in this market change over time and can be implemented unexpectedly, causing risk and uncertainty to the construction companies in the industry. Some opportunities of entering into the construction market are that there is predicted revenue growth over the next five years, as well as predicted profit growth over the next decade. And the market is not controlled by a few major companies, since the largest Canadian construction companies only make up 9% of the market share. Since the market is not dominated by already established companies, this gives new firms entering the market the opportunity to grow, expand, and take a portion of the market shares. Projected market growth rates. Over the next five years, the construction industry and market is expected to increase its revenues and profits. The market revenue for the commercial construction industry in Canada is $31.7 billion with a predicted 3.6% growth rate over the next five years. The public construction market has a market revenue of $11 billion and is expected to grow 3.9% from 2020 to 2025. The construction market profit margin from 2015 to 2020 was 5.3%. However, this industry profit is expected to decline in 2020 due to the cancelling, declining and postponing of commercial construction services and contracts due to the downturn of the economy that is currently happening. As a startup in the construction management industry, our company must evaluate other players in the industry. For competition analysis, we chose to look primarily at publicly traded construction companies located in Canada, specifically in Western Canada. Based on these criteria, Bird Construction and Acorn Groups were our focus.
They're great comparisons for what our company can achieve and also primary competitors we will face. We decided to also briefly include an analysis of PCL because they will provide competition and be a comparison for our company, even though it is privately owned. Acorn Group is a publicly traded construction management company that went public on December 31st, 1987. From 2018 to 2019, the revenue increased by nearly $200 million, an increase of nearly 6%. Their market cap is approaching the threshold of $1 billion. A debt to equity average of 2.63 is quite good for the construction management industry due to the abundance of fixed assets required. And Acorn has a very solid EPS of $1.15, nearly double that of Bird, which will be discussed next. Bird is also a publicly traded company that went public on January 7, 2011. They produced $1.376 billion in revenue in 2019, a slight decrease from their 2018 numbers. Their market cap sits at $363.9 million. This level of market cap typically indicates an established company in a growing industry. When we compare the market cap with revenues, we see a slight contradiction to each other. The revenues indicate a relatively steady uh, growth, while uh, market cap indicates larger uh, amounts of growth. The acquisition of Stuart Olson may be a solution to the lack of increase in revenues from Bird. The revenues should increase substantially in 2020 due to the added market provided by the newly acquired Stuart Olson. Their debt to equity ratio is quite high, but this is typical of the construction industry due to heavy investment in fixed assets, as mentioned before. It is still a number though to keep an eye on for Bird. Lastly, PCL, uh, as a privately owned company, specific information about PCL's financials are uh, significantly harder to find. The main reason they are included in this analysis is to show the current highest revenue earner in the industry. Their 2019 revenues were over $8 billion, which is more than double that of Acon. Uh, this company shows a potential high end of where our company could end up. Carson is our CEO. He'll be leading the team towards our corporate mission and vision. All the decisions are reviewed by him thoroughly to make sure they fit our short-term and long-term strategies before approving any projects. He also represents our company to deliver messages to shareholders and the public while maintaining a positive image to build our reputation. Kinsey is our operation director, who manages their daily operation to ensure all activities run smoothly and meet the deadlines. He will also implement strategic plans by mapping out guidelines and allocate available resources efficiently before starting a project. Occasionally, he will make contingency plans and act as the lead signal for ongoing project. Jaden is our bidding and contract manager. He is responsible for the procurement of materials and confirms the quality is up to our standards. He will also coordinate the contracts of sub-trades that don't fall under the scope of general contractor. He is basically directing the project bidding operations from start to finish and keeping records for McKinsey to review. Anthony is our finance director, and he will manage the company's overall financial position to hit our financial targets. He also manages the project accountants to ensure proper financial reporting for construction projects and make sure all the government and corporate financial policies are up to date as well as forecasting future cash flows. Cassidy is our marketing director, and she is in charge of developing different methods to strengthen our brand image to effectively capture the public's attention. She is going to advertise Apex Construction consistently with a set marketing budget to build brand recognition across Canada. Also, analyze market research to develop new strategies to lead new open bid projects. Public Construction Market Share we decided to base our revenue and growth off of market share percentage and growth rates. In 2020, this industry was an $11 billion industry. Four of the largest Canadian general contractors in this market only possess 9% of the overall market share. As seen in the graph, Acon has 234 million of the industry, which is 2.13%. PCL has 452.1 million, which is 4.11% of the market. Elliston has 246 million, which is 2.24%, and Legcore Group has 62 million, which is 0.57% of the market. This leaves $10 billion, or about 91% of the market shares, open to other contractors or companies in the market. Commercial construction market. The second field we used to analyze revenues and market share growth was the commercial construction market. The Canadian commercial construction market is a $31.7 billion industry. Four of the larger Canadian general contractors in this market also only possess 9% of the market share. 
Bird construction has 363.85 million, or 1.15% of the market. PCL has 2.25 billion, or 7.1%. Lightcore Group has 257.9 million, or 0.81% of the market. And Corex has 22.5 million, or 0.07%. This leaves $28.8 billion of the total market share left, or 90.87%, for other companies in the industry. To calculate what our estimated revenues could be, we needed to calculate the market growth rate of both the public and the commercial markets. The public market is expected to grow at an annualized rate of 3.9% per year from 2020 to 2025. To get the growth rate of 2025 to 2030, we averaged the annualized growth rate from 2015 to 2020 of 4% with the 2020 to 25 growth, 2025 growth rate of 3.9%. The commercial market is expected to grow at an annualized rate of 3.6% per year from 2020 to 2025. To get the growth rate of 2025 to 2030, we averaged the annualized growth rate from 2015 to 2020 of 2% with the 2020 to 2025 growth rate of 3.9. This results in an estimated overall market share in Canada in both industries to go from 42.7 billion to 59.6 billion in 2030. In our first year of operation, we hope to obtain 0 0.02 or two hundredths of a percent market share to a result in approximately $8.85 million in revenue. If we follow a 0 0.05 or five hundredths of a percent market share growth per year, it will result in an overall market share of 0.47% and upwards of $288.52 million in revenue production in our 10th year of operations. For our 10-year operating margin forecast, we expect our operating margin or earned fee to be a loss of 5% in the first year, and we hope to be able to grow that by 2% per year after that. The goal is to end up at flat fee earned margin average of 7% on project in year 7 and eventually 7.5% by year 10. This is standard for the industry where the average typically sits between 5 and 10%. We are projecting these earned fee losses in the first two years as we expect that we may need to undercut bids in the beginning in order to be awarded projects. For our first year, we're projecting a loss of 440000 in operating margin, but if our market share growth grows as expected, we plan to see a positive gross margin by year 4 and by year 10, producing an operating margin of $21.64 million. So this is our 10-year earnings before interest and tax forecast. Um, for our first year, we can expect a total operating loss of approximately $710,000, but by year 5, we should be able to break even. And by the end of year six, we should have a uh, earned margin of approximately 12.61 million. Uh, we can project this because our administrative expenses should only be roughly 5% of what our revenue is for the year, which is pretty close to industry average. And composed within that general administrative expense are unrecoverable salaries, rent, utilities, professional fees, depreciations, things of that nature. That being said about our EBIT forecast, this is our uh, NOPAT and our net profit percentage forecast. Um, with our net income producing a loss of about 710000 in the first year, which is a negative 8% net profit loss, uh, these net pro income losses should be expected for the first four years or so and should break even by year five. Assuming a tax rate of about 40%, we should have a positive net income of $2.85 million by year six or a 2% net profit and we should be able to grow to up to 5.83 million by year 10 which is 2.4% of our revenue earnings uh, which is close to the industry average which is roughly 3% 3 to 5 uh, by year 7 we should be able to fully recover all the losses and be profitable by about 1.28 million and by the end of year 10 we should be profitable by almost 20 million dollars to make our 10-year free cash flow projection, we had to make more decisions on reinvestment rates and estimate what our depreciation would be. We are making prediction that depreciation will be roughly 5% of the general and administrative expense for the year. As a general contractor, most equipment is rented and built to the project, so most of our depreciation expense will be associated to our technology assets, such as computers, software licenses, and etc. We have then chosen to have a reinvestment rate of 5% of the year-over-year -year change in revenue through the first 10 years of operation. Taking this all into consideration, 
we are projecting to have negative cash flow through the first five years. The first year could be a negative cash flow of 3.14 million and with a positive cash flow of 6.12 million by year 10. General and firm value, we needed to calculate the weighted average cost of capital. To do this, we chose ACON and Berg Construction as industry reference points as they have the most readily available information in Canada. Using the betas and debt equity ratios of ACON and Berg Construction as mentioned previously, we discovered an industry average beta of 1.1 and debt equity ratio of 51%. Using correlation factors of 0.6 for years 1 to 3, 0.7 for years 4 to 6, and 0.8 for years 7 to 10, we calculated our total betas to be 1.21, 1.04, and 0.91 over the 10 years. We have chosen to have a debt ratio of 50% and when calculated with our changing betas, we have a changing whack of 4.41 down to 3.78% after year 10. Finally, we get to what our terminal value and firm value are. Using the whack of 3.78%, we come to a terminal value of 222.38 million. And after calculating our discounted free cash flows, we believe we have a firm value of 338.36 million.